it's Janice Baylor for Perry County Council of the Arts and welcome back to another fun drop-in art session. I would like to thank Perry County Council of the Arts and our participating sponsors for continuing to support drop-in art online. Today we are going to create a really cool grid project in the style of local artist Tom Culp. You can find more information at his links below. Perry County Council of the Arts just hosted a big exhibit with him and you can read all about it online at their website. So grab a ruler and a piece of paper and let's work in a graph style. All of the supplies you need for the project are coming right up. For today's project you will need a piece of white cardstock or other white paper a ruler, a black marker, some colorful markers, some colorful pencils maybe, a pair of scissors, a glue stick, and some scrap pieces of colorful paper. You can also get these papers, um, colorful papers from uh, cuttings of magazines too. That would also work. So today's art piece is inspired by artist Tom Culp and he is a local artist out of Harrisburg area which PCCA recently ran an exhibit. So you can go to the website linked below and read all about the inspirations behind his work. But primarily lately, he has been exploring using graphs in his work and what happens when you stay in the lines and squares created by graphs. So that's what we are going to play with today too in the style of Tom. So to get started, go ahead and use your ruler to make equal distance lines on your paper. They don't have to go all the way to the end. Often Tom leaves um, some edges go off of like out of the grid, which I think is pretty cool. And in particular in the piece that I'm inspired by today, Sea Breeze, I see that some of the ends of the graph are open. So we are going to do a similar design with our work too. So go ahead and just make yourself a graph. And I'm leaving, I'm just using my ruler. I'm not really measuring with it. I'm just using it to make straight lines and equal spaced lines. But you can measure if you prefer to measure. Um, if you don't have a ruler, you could use a straight piece of paper or a bookmark or something else that would allow you to create an equal spaced grid to work in. So go ahead and fill up your paper as much as you would like with a grid area. And then we are going to start filling in areas of our grid. So Tom uses paint and collage um, techniques within his work and we're going to do the same thing, but you can also, um, you know, paint it if you want. Today I'm just sticking with markers and colored pencils and a little bit of collage. So also, besides filling in full squares, Tom also does like little repeated designs, like repeated rows of circles, hand-drawn circles or dots. So go ahead and make a few of those and everything should stay within the square on your grid. So I'm going to do a few that have, and they don't have to be exactly the same. So you can explore offsetting things in the lines and what are the different looks that you get when you play with spacing and lines within lines and I'll do one more maybe down here that's like that to spread it out and this one I'll try to be a little bit more precise like the first one I think it's cool to think about 
containing all of your elements in a little square. And then let's add some different colors to this. So I'm going to choose kind of like Seabreeze had some very pretty um, fuchsia red tones. I'm going to color in one of my squares with that fuchsia red and try to stay. This is a point when we really want to try to stay in the lines. We're not coloring outside of the box. We're staying in the box. And let's do another one down here. But within the box, it doesn't have to be perfect. Or that's what I was seeing when I was looking at the work. It just can't spread into the other boxes, okay? So I'm going to add kind of the aqua blue also. And maybe I'm going to make big swatchy lines with the aqua blue. do one up here. So spreading those colors and textures around the page and repeating some of the same elements as well. Oh, I think I feel like I want to have another one of those down here too. And then he also added like some pieces of paper, it looks like collaged over top, but there was cream underneath of it. So I'm going to use my cream pencil and that one took up several blocks. So I am going to go ahead and create that similar effect with my pencil. And do some cream sections that I'm then going to put a strip of collaged paper over top. So I have this one that can reach across several boxes. And this one needs to be a bit smaller. I think it's fun sometimes to learn about art by recreating an artist you see and experimenting with their work and that's pretty common for artists to try some of their inspirations and see what they like about it and what speaks to them about it and then branch off from there and apply that in their artwork so I think that's a cool way to learn and experience somebody's work. If you went and took a trip to an art gallery or a museum and maybe you brought the brochure home or just your memories and then use that to help you create something in a similar style to your artist and appreciate kind of the work that they put into what they do. And I'm going to do one more up here, I think, because I have an extra piece and I think it will look nice. And I like how those are a little bit crossing some of the lines and yet still contained in their row. And then for a different feeling, I'm going to add some really deep purple and make these blocks completely saturated. And I think it's fun to play with like positive and negative space like this. So some areas of the grid, maybe we'll leave those blank white squares. And then we have some areas of our grid that are very filled in and heavy. And we have some areas that are just lightly filled in and are lighter, but there's still interest. And that is what makes art interesting, allowing that positive and negative space for our mind to wander and create thoughts and explore. And I'll do one down here. And I like spreading 
the colors around the page, but maybe you want to explore with what happens if you work with very similar things tighter in your grid or very repetitive. What happens if you fill up the whole grid with dots? That could be very relaxing and meditative. And I'm going to put, let's see, maybe I'll do one purple in every single row. So down here I have this one open. So I'll fill this one in and then I'll do one more. And in this row, I have these three to choose from. So maybe I'll do this one. You could do something similar like this on a small scale if you have a piece of graph paper at home to work with. So now we have all that filled in. Let's do one more color. Um, how about we use I kind of am drawn to this bluish purple. Let's do one more. Um, we'll do a couple more swatches of color in this bluish purple. And this one now I'm going out of the grid. There's no grid space down here at the bottom. So that's kind of cool and interesting. Let me do that up here too in this grid space that goes off of the page. Kind of breaks the plane and that's really interesting. Let's do one, hmm. Oh, I don't know. How about here? I'll do one here. And then how about we experiment with a few more dots in some of our other open spaces? Let's add in a little, like, let's add in bigger dots in black and see what that looks like to contrast with the small dots. These kind of make me think of like rolling a crazy pair of dice. Maybe one more down here. So there you have it. Our Tom Culp inspired grid artwork. And I really encourage you to go check out his work at the link provided and be inspired to work within the constraints of a grid and see where your mind takes you. Thanks for joining me today, friends. Stay creative.